Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight for a very special live screening of the entire season of Apple TV's new uh, series, Calls. Uh, this is a, a nine episode uh, season, and we're going to play all nine episodes uh, back to back. Uh, they run about uh, two and a half hours. And uh, then we're going to follow that up with the Q&A with the creator, writer, director, and executive producer, Fede Alvarez, and executive producer and SCA alumna, Shana Eddy Groof. Um, this is offered courtesy of Apple TV Plus and Studio Canal. And um, it's a very exciting new series. I really hope that you enjoy it and you'll stick around for the Q&A to follow. Thank you so much. All right, thank you all so much for joining us now for the uh, discussion. We've got um, the creator, writer, producer, director, Fede Alvarez, and executive producer and SCA alumna, Shana Eddie Groove. Sorry, uh, uh, mm -hmm. did I get that right? <laughs> Shana, it's Shauna Eddie Groove. Okay, Shauna. So nice to meet you, Shauna. Hey, Hello. Fede. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Thank you guys so much for being here and congratulations. This is honestly uh, one of the most exciting things I've seen on television in a long time. And um, it's really kind of a revelation that, you know, we're, we're in this period where, um, you know, it's really hard to shoot things. I mean, things are starting to get better, but you guys managed to do something really original uh, in, a, in a period of time when um, traditional filmmaking is, is a little harder. And I know that this is obviously uh, based on a show that uh, aired in France. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, sort of what, what inspired you from the original show that, that had been made in France? Why did you want to make this? Why did you want to make it now? First of all, thank everybody for, and you guys for inviting us to do this and to, to, to sit through the whole show <laughs> at one run. Thank you so much. And hey, Shana. Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> I see you a lot. Um, uh, what, I mean, they, they you know, they, Shana, you, you should tell them how we started. I mean, you know, the beginning, I jumped in at some point. Sure, sure. Um, you know, we, we had the show in France and it was a really a big hit and people, you know, were talking about it and, and I, I had heard about it from some colleagues in France. Um, and I watched it and I was like, this is such an incredibly sort of genre bending slash sort of medium bending um, kind of, of show. And I think that this would be a big opportunity, particularly for the US market. Um, I talked to the person who runs Canal, um, whose name is Maxime Sada, and he had a very close relationship with Apple. And, you know, one thing led to another and it was all of a sudden set, set up at Apple. And then actually it got really hard because we couldn't really find someone as brilliant as Fede ultimately was to really crack it because it's actually what looks like a pretty simple production is is not is like anything but um it actually takes an enormous amount of craft which we were sort of you know get, had the the gift of fede because he really understood what the format needed um so so it took a little bit to get to the to the right to the right person but when we did it sort of all went very quickly but fede you can talk about it from there yeah i mean obviously what well, was super interesting, I mean, uh, Shana sh showed me kind of the first episode of the French version, which is is kind of the most similar, it's the only episode that has something to do with our show in a way, like just story-wise, right? And um, and I was, you know, I, you know, when they told me about it, I was ready to pass because I was like, I'm a director, I shoot stuff, like how come I'm not, what, I'm not supposed to shoot anything when they told me what it was. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give it a go. And I remember I was uh, going to bed and I watched kind of the first episode. And, and as soon as I started watching, I could stop watching. I was like so mesmerized and hooked at the whole idea of like just hearing these conversations and not seeing anything. And the French, the French show is even more austere, right? That has very little, it's mostly names on the screen. So it, even with that, it was enough to, to hook me and catch me. So I was like, as the next day, I was like, yeah, let's do this. 
I don't think I've ever been in my life so close to passing something. So I was like, yes, it's like in such a short period of time. It was just like, uh, it was really impressed and, and it's a surprise of myself that I could really enjoy something like that without having to see faces or of anybody. So, so then, you know, and at that point, it started like trying to set like a very long road of, um, of figuring out because obviously, at least for me, the fun part was to create the story that I, I wasn't interested in just taking the the stories from the French format and redoing that, that that's not appealing enough. But if we when they told me you can you can create your own stories, that that's when it, it became really exciting. So and and scary at the same time because we it's, it was tricky to yeah you know, come basically the the bar was really high in many levels. And we said it ourselves right for the beginning. We said we want to do you know nine chapters, ten chapters. I don't remember how much we said at the beginning, and and we said. And they all have to be high concept premises that feels like they're standalone episodes. But then at some point you're going to start realizing this is a, a one single story. So, so that's, and obviously we're we'll excited about that. And then we had to figure out what that was, right? So it, it's usually, I think coming from movies, come up with one high concept for one movie is tricky and, and takes some time. So suddenly we're last year having to come up with nine of those <laughs> like in one year. But that, that was, uh, it was, it was, fascinating a lot and, and uh, something at least for me like it was so, so different from what I was used to that it was uh it was really truly amazing experience and and watching like recently when I when I watched them all again which I you know it's, it's, it's hard for creators to watch their own things but I really had a blast because there was so much work also for the animation team that they did that's just so fantastic so um so that, that's kind of what drew me in right this is the how original the format was and that it was so ripe, you know, just to come up with uh, so many stories, but also very specific stories, stories that were specific to the format. We didn't want to do something that would be better if you shot it, right? That would be better if you were looking at it. We want to do stories that were actually great because you were looking at it. I mean, a lot of the stories work because of that. Well, and Fede, I think one of the, the great moments in the beginning, which was not what was happening with um, the original, was the idea that you sort of, um, decided that it would all be calls, right? As opposed mm -hmm. to sort of the original had a lot of sort of almost voyeuristic elements where you could sort of, which were not necessarily calls. Um, yeah, they had tape recorders like, and radio communication. Yeah. 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 Um, which I thought was like that sort of, that sort of narrowed our focus and in some ways made it harder, but also, you know, made it, made it easier because it, it was completely as if we were listening to only phone calls. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. which, was a, which was an interesting way to 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 sort of put a very fine um, you know a viewpoint on it, which was really that's really what we really started. I mean, it was all for something like this. I think it's all about you have to set up your own restrictions, right? If anything goes, then it's then it's too easy, and then it kind of loses its essence. So a little bit of our whole plan was like well, let's let's set set our own set of rules. And boundaries that we cannot break, and one of them was that, like it, it, the show is called Calls, should be phone calls. Um, just the fact that we were never going to see anything literal on the screen. Remember, at the beginning, when we didn't know how it's going to look, there was a temptation to say, "Well, maybe the shapes suddenly acquire the, you know, the forms, the, the graphics, you know, kind of look like a face, or look like a hallway." Or look, and there was a temptation to that. And then we said, "Like, no, no, no." As soon as we do that, we interfere in. in you know, in the, uh, the audience's imagination, we won't, like we always saying, like if I ask you to imagine a tree and I show you a tree, I'm stepping on yours. Whatever you were gonna imagine was gonna be probably more ideal, a tree that remembers some tree you had in the backyard of your house, something that's personal, something that's exactly what you imagine when you think about a beautiful tree. And I might show you my beautiful tree and there's so many kinds of trees, so I, I, right away it's not ideal. I was just gonna step in the, the beauty of this format is every time something happens and something is said about a place, a, a space, a face, something, we imagine something that's very personal and it's exactly the image of that. That's, that's the part of imagination, but also that's why we, we really try not to be literal. I mean, that my favorite moment, I think is Pedro across the street, like when Mark Duplai and there's Pedro Pascal apartment goes like, nice place, Pedro. <laughs> Everybody imagines, I have my friends and like, you can see how one was like, well, I feel Pedro lives in some kind of modernist, modernist LA place. And another friend of mine was like, no, he obviously lives in the Spanish revival. Like he's <laughs> Latin. <laughs> it was all, everybody imagine whatever, whatever would be the thing that would make them say, wow, nice place, Pedro. 
Um, so that that was something that I think, with among all of the restrictions, I think was the hardest at the beginning to all you know agree on that we were not going to show any literal image. But but now watching the show, I'm proud uh, of it. Of that show, and I'm happy we, we went you know with that choice of never really being literal. No. Well, I want to ask a couple of things about the screenwriting before we really get into the visual design. Um, the first one is, so you you created your own stories, except for, um, let's say, the launch pad first story. Uh, how closely does the conceit, the actual sort of what's really happening uh, out there that's connecting these these episodes, how much is that, is that drawn from the original versus a completely new... Well, the original is com it's completely different. The original is about some biblical supernatural thing, um, which is really fun and it's really cool. But but I I wasn't interested in anything biblical and apocalyptic. You know, I felt like I don't know, not at this at this time. Um, so we we decided to went a different route. But yeah, the, the, it's but also like it's the way it happened. It, it's just I mean, it, it, which is I guess I'm I'm so happy it happened that way that now because I'm so happy with how the show turned out. But the um, or at first, when we just experimenting, Apple said, like, why don't we just do as a pilot the first episode? We have, you know, we do something very similar to the French, just as a pilot, just to test it. Then we'll figure out what the story is. So I was like, oh, fine, fair enough. We do have, you know, you know, it's easy. We have the story. Let's have that script. We wrote the script. Kind of there was kind of echoing some of the beats of the original, um, a lot of the beats of the original French at first episode. So then we did it. And, uh, and Apple was like, oh, this is great. So I think this is going to be the first episode. And we were like, wait, wait, wait a second. No, no, that was, I was like, well, I thought it was just a test and we we're going to still then figure out the whole thing. But they were like, nah, it's, it's great. So we thought, okay, so let's wait for a second and try to figure out. So basically the whole thing was the reverse engineer from that. So it's such a cryptic episode, right? It's, it's, the only, it's the weird thing for the first episode. There's no answer whatsoever. It's a bunch of stuff. I mean, from a screenwriting point of view, it's just like pull whatever you want out of your hat. You know, there's doppelgangers and there's like whatever. And suddenly someone's dead and there's a monster outside. And then, I don't know, they're floating at the end. Who cares? It was a little bit of that, of just how many plot twists and surprises can we, you know, just compress in such a short amount of time. Now, the problem was then when we started, when we realized, okay, we're going to make this show, we're going to make all the rest of the episodes. It's like, now I have to give sense to all that mess. <laughs> But that ended up being a fun way to figure it out. It was, uh, again, it was it was a place that if you had asked me, it would have not been the way I would have decided to design a show. <laughs> but then once we were there, it ended up being a fun way to do it because, and then that's why, you know, second episode seems to have nothing to do with the first one, right? Like, it, which the first one I wrote, right? Roshana, I remember that. The first one, it was, okay, let's try one and, and, and we ride the desert. And, uh, and then even at that point, I was like, how is that going to connect? with the first one but then i think we already at that time, that time it we was not an easy feat it was really not easy it was and it was it was kind of incredibly impressive that he was able to take uh something and by the way the original was really and and more much more of an anthology than than what fetty ultimately came you know brought brought to this this you know show and um and and i think you know you were able to find all sorts of you know, points back to that. And then ultimately the final scene is this beautiful reference back to the original mm -hmm. episode, which was again, totally, you know, Fede's like lovely little bow on the on the whole series. Um, so anyway, sorry, Fede, I interrupted you. But I, I'm just, <laughs> you. I'm, you're being modest. It wasn't so easy, so. <laughs> <laughs> no. it was, it, yeah, no, it was not easy, but it, it, was, a, it was a really great uh, process of discovery and, and uh, and it's at the same time done in a way that is pretty unique for this, I guess, because um, I mean, uh, we're literally, I'm, most of this stuff was done for what I'm sitting right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I joke to all my friends when I go, I can't believe Apple put out a show that I made from my garage. But <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> what it is. Um, but it was, it was really, there was so much freedom creatively, right? And, and I, I really would, Shana and I, like, we would jump on the phone and talk for, three hours about just the episode well, maybe this maybe that and just because in like and then you know apple will have their saying and you know they will they will push back on some things and get us back in track sometimes you were at and 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 you know said a, a really obviously they had a really high bar when it came to everything so it's 
I, I, I watch the show, I think it's great, but obviously it's, it's never, the process is never the studio saying, how great this thing is coming along. It's always like, well, guys, we have to, which is always good. I think the tough love when it comes to producing and studio is, is, is what gets you to push harder and never settle for, for less than, than great. So the process itself was, um, was hard, but at the same time, it was, uh, there was a lot of creative freedom. And I do believe you know, that when you have, it's very rare when you have that chance of, of, you know, of the creative mind to be left alone and free and, and with free and, and just with space to do things and with not a lot of rules and restrictions or things we need to hit, the things that we need to do, or actors that don't want to do this. So like, uh, th this was the, the dream project as I was like, we really could create whatever we wanted as we want. So you're was, also, um, you're also for the writers too, right? I mean, the, um, the creative freedom at some point has to be narrowed by the limitations of the mythology of what's happening, right? Yeah. The writer has to come in and have an idea that's going to essentially make sense within the rules of what you've established. Exactly. Yeah. So but but, but we had we had a writer's room in, in a sense. You know, we never got together <laughs> because it was during like complete lockdown, um, and uh, but it was yeah, it was a little bit of dynamic where we had. What was it? Uh, Nick Hughes, um, Noah Garner, uh, Rhoda Rhoda, I guess, which is my co-writer and 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 most of my movies, um, and Aiden Fitzgerald, and uh, that group kind of we kind of debated. We, we had a lot of brainstorming about what the mythology of the show was going to be, and then I kind of you know we kind of come up with the concepts as we went, and and then everybody goes away and do their drafts. Um, but then part of my job was always to kind of put it back into into one voice. And I think for something like this, it was important. Like otherwise, I could feel a bit more too much of the mismatches of writers. And I, I think a lot of times it was um, then uh, I always had time to just take those drafts and then you know rewrite a lot just to take it into one voice and make sure all the themes were you know were one and. It's a very personal show, you know. It's um, every somebody that knows me watch the show and goes like, huh, "That's that's you," and uh -huh, and that's I can see that in your dad there, and I can see this. With, no, that's something your mom will always say. And it was uh, I never wrote anything so personal in my life like the show. I tell you. <laughs> um, I'm curious when you recorded these, did you ever actually have these recorded as as phone calls? Like were well, they yes, and talking to each other? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We 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 did them. A lot of people think we we just did one actor at a time or something like that. It would have been impossible to get those performances if they were with not acting off each other. Um, we'll have in episodes like let's say like the desert, right? Like episode two, all the actors were standing by already. So we we have a Zoom call at first with everybody. Just we say hi. We kind of you know. They have their questions about some moments. What do you want this or that? Like, what does that mean? If there's a line they don't understand, like uh, that sort of thing. We had like a quick, no, more than half an hour of the discussion about the material. And then we turn off the Zoom. You know, we didn't want to, I didn't want to see faces uh, during the performance because faces would have had a lot, would have been loaded with emotion that the audience was not going to be seeing. So, and so it was better not to, not to see them. And I just right here, I just went to my headphones and I'll just be here like like this all day, like <laughs> listening to the performances. And it was it was a great way. I mean, it, coming from movies as well, like in between every take and every setup is a million years to just be able to run with it and reset and cut it and do it again. Like without had there would no wait whatsoever. It was great. So by the time we were done with the scene and some, you know, I don't know, Jennifer Keeley was waiting to jump to jump in, I would say, okay, this you know, let's move on and, and Jennifer will connect and we'll move on to the next scene and, and you know, just like that all the time. So, and even some episodes, we just did them on one run. I think me, myself and Darlene was done from beginning to the end in one run, I think, um, because it was just fun. I think it's something about the performances that it was good to just let them go, right? The actors just had the most fun, right? Because there's no hair and makeup, there's no lighting, there's no hitting your marks. It's really like the, it's kind of the, the most core, you know, performance piece that you could possibly do. And, and everybody, I mean, at the end of every day, like we would get these incredibly like, oh my gosh, whatever you need, can we do that again? Um, <laughs> it was really, really fun. And again, like, you know, we've both been in the movie business for a really, really long time. So to be able to, 
to work with actors in that way where there's not all the sort of, you know, you know, the huge teams around and the, you know, the, the, the sort of necessities of a big production. It was really fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about the visual design because uh, I'm really impressed at the variety of things that you came up with, but also uh, the almost organic feeling that you get from the visual design for what it reflects in the story that you're listening to. And, you know, that obviously requires an immense amount of um, uh, decision making for your animators, uh, considering that there's nine different stories and they're each strikingly unique. Um, some of them feel like very organic shapes. Some of them feel very connected to the technology that we're dealing with, whether it's the phone or, you know, in that last one in particular, almost feels like it goes into the matrix at one point, you know, that sort of visual. Uh, in some cases, it's geometric when you're talking about the triangle or the spiral, um, just beautiful and, and quite a range. So how did you approach each one uh, conceptually? I think, you know, I don't remember at what point that that came about, Sean, I don't maybe you remember, but I know that at some point we were talking on the phone in one of our long conversations and that was like uh, the concept of the, um, we said like, well, you know, we, we should approach this if it was like a, one of those progressive rock bands from the 70s that it will do like seven albums <laughs> and, and, and imagine that series of covers. And uh, I was so happy when I when I saw it on Apple TV for the first time and I saw it, it, one next to each other and one of the episodes, you could clearly see the concept that each episode was going to be one shape, right? We thought, okay, then every episode will be one geometrical shape or, you know, some sort of shape that... Uh, that should come out of the story, right? And so some crazy, like, you know, one that is all, you know, episode three, that four that becomes all about this love triangle. Nah, okay, it's gonna be a triangle. And and you're gonna be seeing the triangle all the time. And by the time that's revealed, you're gonna go, oh, wow, the, the answer <laughs> to what's going on was right in front of me all the time. Um, then there's some stories, you know, like a little bit, like me, myself and Darlene that, it's just because of characters like that that are always trapped in this kind of cycle of violence and they break up and they get together and they break up and they love hate without well maybe maybe script might be a good shape for it right and and um so in that you know we made the that, that thought process of what is well obviously the desert is a spiral like there was a lot of the things that just came out of the story so it was kind of a you know this the whole approach to the story and the whole thing everybody was so perfect for the show I think because everybody was ready to go crazy to <laughs> just be super trippy about the discussions you know what it means and what it felt the whole thing felt like a very 60s and 70s in our whole approach to the to, to just the mythology and the graphics and what what stories a square what stories a circle because they're very you know they can be very pretentious discussions when you try to come you know bring a, a 12 page script into shape but you know everybody was had the fun to do that and indulge in that sort of in that sort of thinking and um and that's how it happened and so but but once we knew that it was going to be one shape at least it gave a lot more room for the animators right mm -hmm. the, the hardest part in a way it was we, we we find it at some point was we knew there was no camera and there was no faces, but we needed to know what how does a how do we convey the emotion that a close up will do in a movie, right? Or a wide shot, or a or a, a pushing shot down, you know, very low against the ground through a hallway. I mean, all those shots in a movie, I you know, I have my language, I know what how to convey what and that where to put the camera, depending on what's the emotion I want to convey. But this was moving to a different territory, so we had to do like some sort of translation right like a translation book of okay what is what is the close up here where is the traveling shot all that and 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 once we found it then the animators knew probably what i was going to ask for for this particular moment of this other thing like it, it just it just ended up uh, you know it, it took some time the first ones were the hardest once we got going there was more of a language that, that people knew how to follow yeah. one thing to just say about the you know sort of fetes uh, you know, as he was developing this vision, which I really appreciated, there was a lot of push and pull between like how much to do and how little to do. And I think ultimately, you know, this whole idea of, of the imagination is sort of stronger than any, you know, sort of visual element or the, you know, the reference to the tree earlier, 
I think ultimately Fede really, really felt strongly that um, we need to use constraint, you know, restraint rather, um, you know, on as to what the visuals were. So I think when you landed on this idea of the of something as sort of simplistic as as shape and form, it felt really, really right. And then sort of, you know, the idea that it was sort of like record covers, and you know, that also sort of really suited it. So I, I again, I just I. You know when you're when you're thinking about making things, and I you know I work with directors and filmmakers all the time, and you know a lot of times people don't don't think about the white space or the you know the restraint as much as I really appreciated that Fede did in this because it was he really knew where the right you know what to focus on, which was ultimately the story, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not that that diminished the amazing work that Logan did because they really did exquisite work. Um, but it, but it was all about making everything work together. And tell us a little bit about the, the two other elements besides just the, the actual shapes, but also the use of text and the use of color, uh, because those are equally important, right? How did you know from the beginning that you were going to actually represent these conversations via written text? Yes. Yes. I think that was also inspired by the French show was the French show was mostly that it was just the names on the screen with the text of what they were saying. And there was, there was not much apart from that. It was some textures in the background and things like that, but not more about apart from that. So we, we knew the basic that we knew from the get go was that we were going to have the names of the characters on screen and whatever they were saying was going to be written. Um, but then what else we knew we needed to do more. You know, and Apple would have never let us get away with just that. It's like it was an Apple show. It needs to look amazing. It, it it needs Apple is famous for having always groundbreaking graphics and beautiful colors and things. So it, in we knew we need to have that. It, it makes sense. But um, so at first it was going to be like that. But yeah, there was always like Shana was saying, there was this pushback at some point of if they wanted more and I was really trying to fight to keep it simple, right? I mean, the first episode, the first version, which is to my favorite, it, it, it kind of, not exactly that right now, but the, the, the way we approached the first episode, the, the, the one we did the pilot, it started with two names, the one line in the middle and black and white. <laughs> so it, it was like a few seconds, like at least, you know, more than a second, that was one minute and a half or two minutes of just that. Because what I what we want is like, you have to go like, what is this thing? <laughs> Because once you show, but this goes to storytelling in general, and I think great films do the same. You got to start in a place that, and what we were saying all the time, we need to have somewhere to go, right? If we, if we just off the bat, we just burn all our resources, or we just we show the biggest thing we can ever have in the story, like, then there's nowhere to go. Just, there's no crescendo possible. So, so we really push it in the first version. It was like black and white, one line, two names. The line barely vibrated, just a little vibration where they spoke and nothing else. But then suddenly, at some point, something happened in the story, and the line sort of suddenly become red, and you're like, whoa! And even just that thing would kind of blow your mind once you were convinced that it was a black and white show that just had a line. Just adding red to it was super powerful. I didn't even tell you once the background became blue, blow your mind. So by the end, when you were seeing all this red thing coming at you and just text, you were like transported because you never imagined it was going to get that far because you, you thought it was, it was going to be two names in a line, which is still faithful to the spirit of what we did in the first one. Start starts pretty simple. But it's already, for my taste, we're not putting too much color at the very beginning. I, I always, but. The reality, we knew we were going to have the intro and all that stuff. And so it was always going to be colored. Not, not, you know, it was impossible to just start there. But that was the strategy in general. Really start as simple as we can and always have somewhere to go so we don't run out of steam throughout the story. That, that applies not only to the graphics, but obviously to the story itself. Was there, was there any one segment that you found more difficult than the rest to represent visually? Maybe I mean they were all so difficult. They were all like when you think about it, just no. It's just an abstraction of lines and movement while while characters are having this discussion. Plus, we we made uh, the stories so conversational that there's no there's no, apart from some some episodes when people kind of move around. A lot of them just people could have been sitting on their couch, you know, talk, having talking to someone, and and the and the drama still works. Um, so there was not a lot to go on based on movement and space. I mean, some, there's some of them that have that. So 
I think they were they were honestly they were all difficult when it came to crack them and to figure out how this is gonna look and what the graphics should do. But you know, we always started in a simple place that didn't look like much, and we'll all watch it and everybody will give their thoughts and notes and when it's flat, when we need more and. And that was a, you know, it was a great collaboration with everybody like watching it and trying to make it better by, you know, feeling it and feeling when do we need to do something, when it needs to go quiet, right? But um, it needed to echo the emotions that you were feeling. That was the whole thing. And it, it could never be loud if you're not feeling anything too exciting. Now, like, I think there's nothing worse in storytelling in general that, than having a story, a graphic, an actor, a score, that is trying to push you beyond what you're actually feeling. You know, it's like, it's like watching something that is not that exciting in an action movie. The music, the music is driving me nuts. It's just annoying. Right? It's just, it's like having someone sitting next to you going like, is this great? This is amazing, right? No, dude, it's not. It's not that exciting. <laughs> so we're always trying the graphics and nothing in the music, never trying to push you too hard into feeling, you know? The music is not very melodramatic. We, we could have gone for that, right? Like in, 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 a, in a world where they all have faces, we, we could have gone for a score that was way more melodramatic or like incidental as well, more a lot more of chunk chunk to wee suspense. We didn't do any of that. The music is very subdued and it's there just to create a mood. So we are really trying, we really lend the audience do all the work and, and, and us trying to be as cool as we could without going overboard. So that, that was kind of also the work with the graphics and, and the sound, everything that was just the visuals. So I trying to make sure we had the same level you know matching the emotion of the audience and never going overboard or never staying on the you know below which is always, mm -hmm. uh, will, will be also bad um well i i want to i want to talk about one in particular um before taking some of these audience questions and um i think i want to ask about it because it's uh it's it's a little bit of one of the more like literal visuals for um it's for the episode pedro across the street which I just think from, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's such an exciting story. And yet it's represented visually very simplistically with, you know, the sort of the line and the block and, you know, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what about it aesthetically I found so appealing, but I, I just loved watching it. So tell us a little bit about the process of designing that one. Yeah, I think that one was the same. We we knew it was going to be this kind of crossroad graphic, just um, because we had we were going to put the main character in this in this big crossroads in his life, uh, and because we were talking about this suburban story that probably happens in some street at a corner, you know, across the street from each other, and you know, and and it had the name across the street in the title, so we knew it was going to be when it came up with the crossroads. It makes sense. It's kind of a it kind of give you that the basic idea of a street, a two intersecting street. Um, so, and once we had that, then then it was it became super interesting just to play with space. And that one is one of those that do have a lot of movement, right? At least he goes back and forth to a house and then back and then goes back in there or goes upstairs and downstairs. So suddenly all the graphics were kind of just tracking Pedro. And actually, you know, um, what's the name of um, Mark Duplass character? Um, Patrick. Uh, and so and, uh, so Pat it's just tracking Patrick all the time. So Patrick goes up, the graphics just goes up and then he goes back to the house and then turns and so he kind of uh if I remember that that that's one of the ones that the first time I I showed to a friend when it was it was still a working process. So this thing finished and it was like it was like I just felt like I just saw the whole thing. <laughs> he was like so happy and blow away. He felt like he had seen the and but he said I felt like it just seen a whole movie, like uh, this whole story because the, the plot, I tell you, the plot, the way we designed these things, even though they're compressed, we took the plot of, of a, about one hour and a half movie and compressed them in 12 minutes because the twists that are happening, like you, you could definitely make a film <laughs> with all the plot of, of Peter Cuss Street probably, just you know, spreading out the twists and just having more fillers. There's no time for fillers in this show. Like there's, every time the conversations get dull and it gets just nothing is happening, you know, we need to bring some new twist to it. So that's why it's so dense. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite episodes as well. It's, it also has such an offbeat tonally with the rest of the show as well. And the actors were just brilliant. It's when, fantastic. Yeah, you know, it, it was the perfect cast for it. Pascal was like, just, just like so incredibly that character and 
so it was marked. I mean, the whole thing, you know, all of them were really, really brilliant. We, we got super lucky with the cast. It was one of those three scenarios as well. I, I don't know what it was. It was because they were all at home bored to death and they were not shooting, which is a testament to the script. But in any case, most people, we, and most of the time, we would just say, what do we want for this? Like, let's say this, this, and that in. And you will call me like a couple of days later. Say like they're all in. I was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was remarkably. Um, I I I don't. The casting process is almost always brutal, but this was one of the easier ones for sure. Yeah, it's incredible. And Pedro was fine with not having his face on film, uh, despite two seasons of a TV show where he can't take his mask off. <laughs> he was totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> he was totally fine. He loved it. <laughs> Um, okay, so let me let me jump into some of these audience questions. Um, okay, uh, okay, so this is from Antonio. Um, I assume everything happens for a reason in film, and you picked my hometown as one of your locations. Uh, he doesn't specify which one that is, but uh, how did you pick the locations and dates? Are they just arbitrary to uh, to provide some personality? I must know. Um, I mean, some some of them are, some of them aren't. I mean, there was there was we always knew that there was kind of an epicenter for the events of the story. You know, wherever that antenna is at the end of the episode, where like Stephen Lang's character needs to shut it down, and we knew that was going to be somewhere in the desert. And then uh, when we need the desert, that could be something to connect Los Angeles with uh, with uh, Arizona and all that area. So then. Um, some of those events, like you know, like the, the episode two in the desert, and even the episode five, the universe did it. Was it five, and they go to music festival around there. So we knew there was going to be something around that area. So a lot of it just was geographically us choosing cities and, and places that kind of happen around them. Then there were uh, there were others that we needed to be in different time zones. So you know, like the first one, third New York and, and Los Angeles. Um, so yeah, it's not because we know he was from that town, uh, you know, your your guy. But it was. You're from, it was but it, uh, characters from from Huntsville, and I think that was me, myself, and Darlene, right? I, that was Roto, so oh, yeah. I don't know why chose that. <laughs> there you go. But I don't, I don't know. At this point, I don't remember. There was a, there's always a process in the writing that you just go and Google and start like looking at Google Maps and. And going to Google Street View and trying to figure out how the place looks and, and all that. So it, a lot of that comes out of the house, just that research. Um, okay, this question is from Mickey, and I'm assuming this is probably more of a Studio Canal question. Um, given the popularity of audio only podcasts and the theme of the story is audio, how did you decide uh, uh, to provide visual graphics instead of just audio? Uh, would you consider an audio only version? Um, I mean, I think, I think people, if, you know, people could listen to it, I think, but it doesn't, it doesn't augment the experience. Um, I really think that this is a different experience than either a podcast or a television show. And I think that's part of what was so appealing to, you know, all of the creatives that got involved, myself included and Fede included, was the idea that you could have something that was transfixing enough to keep your attention, um, but not so much so that it distracted from this, this sort of very interesting podcast history. And, and I can't, think you can't underestimate the actual words on inside of the boxes because there's something about the way that you pay attention to this show that is different than the way you pay attention to a traditional narrative show or a podcast. And I think um, that's kind of what makes it kind of almost a medium unto itself. And certainly what got me really excited about it when I first saw it. So- but, And also I, at the same time, it wouldn't be, I don't think the show like this, I've been asked the same question a few times and the same show it would have been just a podcast. We'll get none of the cast. None of these actors will do it. Well, we'll, we'll, you know, you will you probably, I, I guess, but I, I will take a while guess that most of them will not do the podcast version of it um, because that exists and that's been done. And there's a few, uh, there's a lot of great podcasts and there's fiction in them. There's a great thing. This, this uh, the way we did at least was never been there. It's never been done before that way. So even the French show doesn't go that far. So that's what usually 
for you know at least for me and i'm sure a lot of the actors involved that's what was appealing about it, it was was just something that is completely experimental and strange and, and i do believe the audio version the audio only version of this would be a completely different experience and a lesser experience and not even getting into the fact that a lot of information you wouldn't get it because there's like like pedro across the street is the funniest thing is when pedro is texting him what his wife is going to say and, and right before she says it and, and things like that that you could you could never do it in an audio version um you'll get a lesser experience still you might get a kick out of it if you just listen to it but i think the the goal and the ambition was the ambitious was to do like this like just to try to create all that visual language and and have more create more storytelling tools uh, that you will have in an audio only version. but we had i mean fede had to sort of like define a lot of these tools with the animators um because you know when you think about doing close-up for emotion when you're doing it in this kind of format, it's completely, it's it, it's just, you have to sort of think about it in a completely different way um, than when you would typically do, you know, a medium and a close up and like cut the between those. And so it was, it was really like, I mean, Fede, I remember like, you, you know, you, with us going back and forth with Logan, just, you know, you getting kind of, you know, like, do we want to do it that way? Do you want to, I mean, it was, it really took, took doing. And I think, um, I think it's it's subtle and 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 you know if you've seen it a million times like we have then you really notice it but I think you notice it you know intrinsically and emotionally as you're watching it um, without necessarily like being confronted with a close up that you would in a traditional environment um, so a lot of thought went into those little details and I think that 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 you know certainly makes the experience all the, all the better. You know, speaking of, of watching it uh, a bunch of times, I'm curious to know how, from a screenwriting standpoint, you balanced mystery with um, the sort of uh, uh, satisfaction of it being nine individual stories. And by that, I mean, when you've seen them all and you have a better sense of what's actually happening, you can go back and, you know, watch and listen again. And that's probably going to add something. But what about that first time around? How how um, how did you gauge whether the episode was complete on its own versus as part of a nine episode arc? Yeah, it, it, it was a tricky balance. I mean, we knew they need to work on their own. Um, I didn't want I didn't want people. I mean, we were really hoping that people were going to watch it in order and and it would get very quickly that this had was a single story. You know, because sometimes like stuff like this, like a Black Mirror or a show like that, they will go, someone will go, well, oh, watch episode eight of season three is great. And you just jump straight to that, right? You don't necessarily watch the whole thing. So here we, we were like, you know, we, a lot of the campaign Apple did as well was just to let people know that it was a single story they need to unravel uh, watching them all. So I think there was, that was a challenge. We need to, to be standalone and plus move the story forward as a chapter, right? So that, that was not easy at all. Um, but we, you know, we managed to do them. Some of them were easier than others. I, I think the, um, you know, the, 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 it's just a very different kind of storytelling. Uh, I, I tell you, it's, it's different from a movie. It's different from a standard TV show. You need to bring um, certain characters that I knew were going to eventually had to bring back characters. You know, just to really close. There was no way around that. But. Um, my logic with this thing that I play the same to movies, but this in particular with this, you know, when I talk about it again, the first time you see it, but then when you see it again, the things like that, I always assume that whatever I put in the story, the audience will get just 25% of it. <laughs> there's just, there's just no way. It doesn't matter how well or how clear or how in the nose, just there's a the brain cannot absorb the whole thing. So in my usually is even if it just get 25%, it should work. So, so we knew that Kind of each one of those episodes we were like okay on this episode they will understand there's chaos in the world and it seems like it's the end of the world on episode two they're gonna understand uh you, you can't talk with the future in the past that's all i need to get then by episode three um they're gonna understand that this is happening to other people because pedro says i got a call from myself from the future oh so then, then then they by that point they're gonna understand that this is happening to more than one individual but then by the fourth one, we introduce this new idea that some people might disintegrate into pieces and that something's wrong happened to them. And that's all I need you to get from that episode in order to keep moving it forward. So it's just, 
each one of them contribute in, in, in a simple way to put to, this story together, right? Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the tricky part definitely was to make sure they didn't feel you know, too derivative of the other ones, or like or just something that just needed to be uh, something that if you haven't seen the other ones, you didn't understand, right? Um, I think, but we we kind of start doing that a bit more by the time we got to episode five, by the time we get to the universe did it, you know, it will be interesting to see how someone feels if they just jump right into the universe did it without having seen anything. Uh, if it will be an interesting experience or no, I don't know. I, you know, it, it's hard for me to imagine. Well, I mean, that's a, a you've still got some people uh, locked at home. You should jumble them up and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's to watch five, see how it feels. Um, okay, so there's a, a final comment and then a final question. So uh, this is from Jane, it's a comment. Uh, she, she loved it and she also loves radio. Um, the show's reminded her of an old show that used to be on KCRW, Joe Frank's show. Uh, as an artist and dancer, she appreciated the visuals that were provided with the dialogue. And it's amazing how much tension was created by the series. So thank you and good luck. Yes, thank you. Um, and then, uh, okay, so one last question. This is from John. Did you consider casting anyone whose experience was primarily with voiceover work? We, we did. I mean, there's a lot of actors that, that are there that are just very talented um, voice actors. I think, um, you know, why we didn't do just voice actors, mostly is because for me, it's more fun to work with these actors that I always want to work with. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of talented actors out there, but if I don't know them, I don't know much about them. It doesn't, it's not that I can't wait to work with them. So a lot of the actors that we had, it was just a lot of actors that I really, really want to work with. Um, and, uh, and, and this gave me an opportunity to do so. And uh, so, but there were, there were, you know, not all of them are famous names. There was a lot of, of actors that did a great job that were like, you know, character actors, voice actors that do a lot of, uh, you know, animation and, and voice acting in general, which was great also because they had such a good craft. They either were in and out, they knew how to do it right away. For some of the, I mean, I guess most of the other actresses and movie actors, they, they did a great job as well. They, I don't think they needed too much guidance either because at the end of the day, they were, they were pretending to be talking on the phone, which is different that if, if this would have been like one of those radio shows where someone walks into your living room and goes like, oh my God, there's a dead body on the floor and you hear a bell and someone runs in and you hear doors, well, that, that, that would be different. That, that might be required a specific skill. Or how do I convey what's happening in the room just with my voice? This wasn't that. This was exactly what they were doing, tucking in the phone. So, so I think that's why it made it easier for most of them. It, it didn't become something that they felt unexperienced, or they uh, that at least it was going to be, you know, lesser uh, lesser performance because of the lack of experience. I think they all did great. But it is interesting how when you can pick up on the voice of the actor, it sort of gives you another la layer of uh, visualizing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The, the pager across the street, you know, like there's no way you're not going to catch Pedro Pascal or Judy Greer, Mark Duplass, like that suddenly is yeah, I can yeah. an entire thing happening, you know. Uh, and, they, and, they, and they do what great cast does. It is a, 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 the right casting is a shortcut for the writer, right? Just, you know, you, you see Mark Duplass' face, you know, writing a book at home and, and having uh, the wife that is the, the one that brings the uh, Turkey, like it's the right. I don't need to say much just because of that face. He conveys everything I want, so I don't have to say too much about him, how he is, who kind of like what kind of life he led. Like you know, the same with Perry. I mean, this the right face just in a movie like in this, and then in this case also it was the right voice. I mean, Mark Duplay also has the perfect voice for it for some reason. Like right? they, they just just like massive shortcuts to get the audience to understand what you want to say about this this person. That's why sometimes when someone is miscast, it's like, they don't look anything like the audience, you know, think the character looked like, right? So, because this is like, we, like I always said, like casting and, and movies is, is all based on the audience prejudice. It's like all of our super heavy prejudice about if someone looks like that is a loser. If someone talks like that is an arrogant, person like it, it's all our prejudice it doesn't and faces and personalities shouldn't have anything to do with that. but we all have so many prejudices with that the same with in the way the same the way of voice sound so the 
we were not just casting based on oh this actor. We we want them to sound like the characters, and we we that's why for us it was easier when we knew the actors. We knew how they sound, and we knew if they're sounding or not like the characters uh, on the story. So. Um. Oh, we got we got in. Uh, let me see one more note. The writing and directing is amazing, and I truly enjoyed the series. You guys are completely right that the visuals add that the visual adds to the story. Is the series available for adapting for other regions like Southeast Asia? Um, I think I don't know, Shana. You 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 answer that. You'll know. We um, we have a deal with Apple that actually is a worldwide deal. Um, and we have talked about the possibility of doing a specific sort of country adaptations. Um, we haven't gotten that far, uh, you know, but uh, you know, we'd be open to having the conversation. It would really, it would really be up to Apple because they, you know, they, they, you know, bought in hook, line and sinker and they are a world worldwide, you know, company at this point, so. Uh, well, just to, to wrap it up, I, uh... I guess I should ask, is there, are there plans for call season two? When Fede, it, you know, agrees to have lunch with me, we'll have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. If, if we, can ask you about, uh, <laughs> we can find someone to... smart enough to, 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 uh, to mirror Fede's uh, genius on this, then maybe we can do a <laughs> But in the meantime, you you guys have in the can. Don't breathe too, right? Did you guys? Yeah, have yeah. It, 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 last year for me was all. Most of it was doing calls, but at the same time I was producing. Um, it's, a, it's the first year I'm just producing, right? Um, so I produced Don't Breathe Two and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and uh, both of them shot through the pandemic and and, and survived it. And uh, and now I'm I'm finishing both of both movies, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just. Um, they're both in the, in the final days of uh, mix and color grading and, and all this stuff. It was it was a it was a fun experience, to like to to just produce for me as a director, like to just come in. I mean, you not produce, just produce. There's no for me. There's no such thing because I produce, but I write as well, and I do so much. On, I play hands on on, on those movies. Um, I have, and one of them I wrote the script, another one I wrote the story, and and then I'm super involved in, in kind of just a creative movie in general, right? But it's you know, it's a different, it's a different hat, but it's it's, it's a fun one. It sounds like no one's gonna use Fede of being unproductive during COVID. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he did so much for 2020, for sure. Yeah. And just for what it's worth, I literally met him once the day, like I think it was the Friday when everything was shut down, and like never got to see any. None of us ever got to see. Yeah, it's anyone crazy. On like we never got to see our animators, our sound people. No one. No one. But it's just like the in a way, in a funny way. It's almost like out at like the show. You never saw any faces, but you feel like you have. Like we met just once, but I felt like we hanged so many times last year. <laughs> <laughs> felt like we did nothing else but just work with you every day. <laughs> but in a strange way, we never really met. It's just like this. Remarkable. Well, I hope we're the next year fixes that. Good dinner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing this with us, with coming on and talking about the experience of making the show. And uh, good luck with all of your projects. There's a lot to look thank forward to. Thanks so much. To. Thanks. Thanks yeah, so much, thank Elle. You. Thank you, everyone, everybody, who, for listening to it. The show. Talk, talk about it. Yeah. We're really appreciative. Yeah. Thank you so much.